To clear HPV, you need to have a robust immune system and a robust immune response. What determines the vitality and the strength of your immune system is largely what's happening in your digestive tract. Now, if you take the small intestine and you spread it completely flat, it's about the size of a tennis court. Now, the reason why it's so large is that by having greater surface area, you have the ability to absorb more nutrients, which is what most people think of as, um, as the function of their uh, gastrointestinal system is to absorb nutrients out of your food. However, if you've compromised the integrity of what's otherwise a selectively permeable structure, that being your entire mucosal surface of the small intestine, if you've damaged that, now you're going to be leaking all sorts of things into your bloodstream that shouldn't be there. And that's going to burden not only your uh, liver, but it's going to end up triggering immune system response and can lead to things like um, food allergies and things like that. So what I'm speaking of is intestinal hyperpermeability or what's more commonly known as leaky gut syndrome. So in a nutshell, what hyperpermeability is, is just that this otherwise selectively permeable structure has been compromised, it's been damaged, and now all sorts of things are leaking into the bloodstream. They can include, and, and mainly what's leaked into the bloodstream are large things, large molecular weight, undigested, or partially digested food stuff, as well as even bacteria and yeast and other microorganisms, all of that can make its way into your bloodstream and your lymphatic system. And then it's gonna end up burdening your liver. You're gonna have issues with detoxification and it's gonna end up triggering your immune system. So your immune system is gonna start having some level of dysfunction. Now, it's noteworthy that approximately 80% of your immunity and 80% of your immune system is around all of your intestine. It's called the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. So this, this gut-associated lymphoid tissue or, or GALT um, is, is where a lot of immune activation is uh, created. So your digestive function is gonna make or break uh, your immune system and it, and it becomes of critical importance. So when you have intestinal hyperpermeability or leaky gut syndrome, you're leaking all these things in your bloodstream, your immune system's going haywire. You know, at this point in time, there's so much research on leaky gut syndrome, it's been correlated with, if not all disease, um, maybe a lot of disease or most disease, including autoimmune disease. So it's looking like damaged uh, intestinal function intestinal hyperpermeability is the precipitating event in maybe all illnesses. And in fact, here's a 2020 study that made that very claim, which is that leaky gut syndrome is really the origin of all disease. Um, and that's probably true because if you have this condition, you're going to end up with a hyperinflammatory response and inflammation is, is the cornerstone of pretty much all disease. So it really becomes a big issue. What causes intestinal hyperpermeability? Probably the most significant contributor to this condition is just injudicious eating habits. You know, what largely is responsible for maintaining the health of your intestinal mucosal surface or your intestine and this selective, the selectively permeable nature of, of the intestine are the bacteria that reside there. So you have 100 trillion approximately bacteria that live on the surface and uh, of your small and large intestine and they're responsible for the health so they produce things that help feed um, the intestinal cells for example short chain fatty acids are one of the things that the enterocytes or the cells that line the intestine um, that's what they get most of their energy from is is actually a bacterial byproduct but the types of bacteria that produce these things are healthy bacteria so this is gets into the whole issue of the microbiome and most of you probably heard you know about all the different types of bacteria but at, at this point in time you know there's probiotics that are for sale and things like that but the reason why or one of the reasons why a person might take a probiotic is that you're trying to um, create a better environment, a better microbial environment, and, and have higher numbers of bacteria that have these beneficial effects. So what maintains the health and integrity of your digestive tract mainly are these healthy bacteria, but what feeds healthy bacteria are actually the types of foods that you're eating. And I've said this in other videos, um, 
pretty much the rule of thumb is that plants, you know, plant-based types of products are going to end up supporting healthy bacteria and animal products tend to support more unhealthy types of bacteria. So that's pretty much rule of thumb. The fiber that's found in plants is what healthy bacteria live upon and they actually ferment and digest fibers in, in these plants and produce things like short chain fatty acids, which is where, again, uh, most of your intestinal cells are getting their energy from. So it becomes really important in maintaining the integrity of the health and, and the health of your intestine. So first and foremost, a poor diet, eating a lot of junk food, eating a lot of animal products, not eating enough fiber is going to end up resulting in um, a dysbiosis or an imbalance in the microbiome that's going to end up damaging the intestine. So that's, for most of us, that's probably the main thing that's going to end up damaging our intestinal system. The other thing really is medications so and other types of drugs and, and just um, poor behaviors. So non anti-inflammatories are, are a great example of things that can damage the intestinal um, surface, as well as some other medications. So, um, you know, the, then the question becomes one of, you know, should you test or how do you test for intestinal hyperpermeability? I'm not a big fan of testing for it. When I started practice 25 years ago, I ran some of the tests that were available. What I prefer doing is is just treat it. I mean, most of us probably have some degree of intestinal hyperpermeability, so you might as well treat it that way. And the treatment is simple enough. For example, the main treatment you would do, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here because I'll cover treatment in just um, a little bit, but one of the main things you do is change your diet and you would change you know, to a more plant-based diet. Everybody should be changing to a plant-based diet anyway, so that's all just upside, so that's a good thing. One of the things I had started to do over the years was you know, I've always done food allergy testing, and I like, I like food allergy testing, especially if you're having any sorts of digestive problems. And the benefit of doing food allergy testing is a couple things. It can tell me what in your diet you're having an issue with, and um, so then you can actually make some changes in your diet and, and, and have some beneficial effect like that. But if you have enough sensitivities, in other words, if you run a panel a food, al food allergy panel, say that's 180 foods, and it's coming back with 25, 30, 35 different reactive um, foods, or in other words, foods that have showing, you know, that are showing high antibody titers like IgG titers or IgA titers, um, you can infer that you probably do have hyperpermeability, which is why you have so many food allergies. So there's likely some link between having hyperpermeability and having an increased number of foods that you're reactive to. So I felt I got more bang for the buck, in other words, by doing food allergy testing in most people, as opposed to just strictly doing a hyperpermeable test, which is gonna give me some information about the permeability, but really nothing else. So now I know, okay, yeah, it looks like you have some permeability issue. Now we're gonna treat it. I, I, I wouldn't advise doing the testing personally, um, but you know, where I would advise possibly doing food allergy testing depending on the circumstances and whether you're having any other symptoms that might benefit by doing testing. To treat leaky gut syndrome and improve overall GI health, thus improving your overall immune system function, requires removing any sorts of deleterious or harmful substances. Now those are mostly medications and drugs and, and some recreational um, drugs and things like that. So you want to, if you're taking Advil or Aleve, like a non steroidal anti-inflammatory product, you shouldn't be taking that. So you see women, some women take them like, um, you know, like candy around the time of their menses just for cramping and things like that, but they actually damage the intestinal um, surface and cause hyperpermeability. So the most common drug that's probably going to contribute to intestinal hyperpermeability and compromised gut function is going to be non steroidal anti-inflammatories. Um, maybe the second thing might be alcohol. So alcohol actually increases permeabilities and, and can damage the intestines. So that's, that's probably the second most common, th well, maybe that's the most common, it depends on the person, I guess. But, um, so you wanna remove things that are, that are um, obviously damaging to the gut, but then you wanna support 
healthy bacteria function. And this is really probably two parts. So you want to be eating more of a plant-based diet, which I've stated already. The fiber that's in a plant-based diet is going to help feed healthy bacteria. So that's probably the most important thing a person can do. Secondary to that and, and associated with that would be taking a good probiotic. My favorite probiotic is this one. It's the Megaspore Biotic. It's a bacillus type of probiotic. So um, bacilli end up forming spores or endospores so they can go through the stomach and into the intestine um, unharmed and then they, they actually end up coming alive or they go into a vegetative phase in the small intestine and start doing all sorts of good things. So um, I, would, I would recommend taking that probiotic. And then there's a few other things. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA and EPA, uh, docosahexaenoic acid and icosapentaenoic acid. Those are marine source omega-3s. I, you know, it's hard to get DHA in a plant source. You can get an algal source if you're vegan, um, you know, but again, ocean sources are gonna tend to be a little bit higher um, in, in DHA. And then zinc is also important. Zinc is um, helps with healing. And then maybe one of the most common things that's used for leaky gut is glutamine. You can actually get glutamine powders. I have a link below to my, um, you know, to my dispensary at Thorne, um, you know, nutraceutical company. And in the dispensary, I have the glutamine powder and some other um, GI products that can help with intestinal hyperpermeability as well. So again, the point of looking at gut function is that gut is gonna make or break you. It really is the single most important factor in the health of your immune system and the likelihood that your immune system is gonna be able to clear HPV. So this is especially true if you've been frustrated and you've been having a hard time clearing HPV. In other words, you've had HPV for maybe longer than a couple years. If you've had HPV for longer than a couple years, you're having a problem with it. And you really need to look at some of the underlying issues of why that may be happening. I would even consider doing and well, this stands for anyone. If you're having some bloating issues or you're having digestive problems, then I would, you know, kind of, you know, kind of roll up my sleeves and really try to figure out why that may be happening. That's where I might do food allergy testing and um, try to determine what your body's reacting to. Because if you're having some sensitivity to foods that you're eating, even if they're otherwise considered healthy foods you know, that's gonna really do a number on your GI tract and um, that's gonna end up compromising your immune system function as well. So as far as testing goes, I said earlier, I wouldn't do, you know, I wouldn't test for hyperpermeability typically, but if you're having any, especially if you're having any GI issues at all, then I would do food allergy testing because that is absolutely those, those hyper responses or those inappropriate responses that your immune system is having to foods that you're eating, that will absolutely sap your immune system and compromise it and you may end up having a harder time clearing HPV. So in those circumstances, I would absolutely do food allergy testing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and um, share my channel.